Praise be Jesus and Mary. On the solemnity of St. Francis of Assisi, we hear Jesus in the gospel turn his gaze heavenward to offer a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to his heavenly Father. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things, meaning the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You have hidden these things from the wise and learned and have revealed them to infants or to children. Matthew 11, verse 25. It shouldn't surprise us that the greatest saint of our age, whom we celebrated just a few days ago, St. Therese of the Child Jesus, was given the baptismal name Marie Francois Therese, Francois for Francis. And so she shares, she shares not only in the name of the Pavarello of Assisi, but she also shares in his spirituality, which is characterized by making oneself small so that God can make us great. And so fittingly in the gospel read on her feast day, it was, it was also taken from St. Matthew, and we heard Jesus say to his disciples, whoever humbles himself like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, verse 4. St. Therese and St. Francis made themselves small, and so God made them great. They didn't make themselves small in the sense that Nicodemus intended our Lord's words in John chapter 3 when he thought that to be born again meant that he had to go back into his mother's womb and, and come out a second time. Uh, so if Jesus would have said to Nicodemus that the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is a little child, we could imagine Nicodemus running around all of Judea looking for a potion that he could drink to make himself small, uh, to become small again, obviously. That's not what our Lord intended, and St. Francis and St. Therese understood that. They made themselves small in the practice of that most beloved of virtues in God's eyes, in the virtue of humility, second only perhaps to the virtue of charity. Didn't we hear our Lord say in the gospel today, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart? He said in Matthew 11, verse 29, the Latin Vulgate reads, humble of heart as humilis corde, and it reminds us of the words of Our Lady that we recite at Vespers every evening, and how she describes herself in the Magnificat when she says, quia respexit humilitatem ancile sue, for God has regarded the humility or the lowliness of his handmaid, Luke 1, verse 48. So if Jesus describes himself as humble and humble of heart, and Mary uses that same adjective, humble, in describing herself, and that's a virtue that all of us really need to make an effort to acquire. Unfortunately, we can't buy humility uh, at Amazon or at the grocery store, unfortunately, at least not yet. Uh, so how do we acquire it? Well, we acquire it by asking for it in prayer. Ask and you shall receive, says our Lord in Matthew 7, 7. We also acquire humility by sitting at the feet of Jesus and sitting at the feet of Our Lady and learning from them. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me and you will find rest for your souls, said the Lord in today's Gospel, Matthew 11, verse 29. So the more we make Jesus and Mary the center of our lives and the models which we strive to imitate, the more they will transform our hearts and our lives as well, transform our hearts into their hearts. If a husband wants to be a, a spouse after the heart of Christ, what should he do? He should study his wife, he should be a good student of his wife, he should know what speaks love to her, he should know how to serve her, he should try to understand things from her point of view and vice versa as well. Wives should be good students of their husbands, they should know what speaks love to their husbands. They should know how to serve them, to make an effort to see things from their point of view. That's one of the recipes of a good marriage, and it's in the spiritual life, it's one of the recipes for becoming a better disciple of Christ by studying him, by studying our Lord, by reflecting on his words and actions, by knowing what speaks love to him, what speaks love to Our Lady, by making an effort to see life from their point of view. And when we study Jesus, when we study Mary, we know that, if nothing else, they love that virtue of humility, even more, more so than I think we realize at times.
The humility that comes with seeing ourselves as children, totally dependent on the Lord and seeing God as our all-loving, all-good Heavenly Father, the humility that comes with that brings with it a peace that most people would actually do anything to have in this life, uh, but which remains always out of their grasp. Why? Because most people refuse to live life God's way. Most people refuse to take to heart the gospel of Christ. St. Francis and St. Therese chose to live life God's way. They chose to take to heart the words of our Lord and to put them into practice in their own lives. And so now they share in the eternal reward of being among the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So today let's ask both of them to help us to learn that spiritual childhood which was a hallmark of their lives and which raised them far above all their contemporaries in the eyes of God and now also in the eyes of men. Praise be Jesus and Mary.